RFK Jr., who is a conspiracy theorist and trying to run for president under the Democratic ticket, is denying up and down, left and right, that he never said that uh, the COVID-19 virus uh, targets uh, white people and black people and does not target uh, Jewish people and Chinese people. Well, he can't run away from this. COVID-19 attacks certain races um, disproportionately. The, uh, the, 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 the races that are most immune, immune to COVID-19 are because of the, of the structure of the, of, um, the genetic structure, of, uh, uh, genetic differentials among different races of the, um, of the receptors, of the ACE2 receptor. Um, COVID-19 is targeted to attack uh, Caucasians and, uh, and, uh, and uh, black people. The people who are most immune are Ashkenazi Jews and, uh, and Chinese. There you have it. He, he said the words. And he said the word targeted, which to me says he believes that it was specifically made to be that way. I.e., he believes it was a, a purposeful thing. You know, causation versus correlation. He, he doesn't believe that there's a chance that it might be just happens. Let's say it's true. Let's say it's true, and I don't believe it's true, but let's say it's true that the virus affects uh, non-Jewish white folks and black folks more than it does uh, folks who live in China, folks from China, and... Jewish folks who are Ashkenazi. I mean, let's say that that just happens to be the case. It doesn't mean that it was made that way. You'd have to prove that it was made that way. It could just be random dumb luck. Or it could be another reason altogether. It doesn't mean that it was created that way. And you'd have to prove that it was created that way. But conspiracy theorists, especially the anti-vax type conspiracy theorists, are going to just make that wild leap without any proof because that's the way they are but there's also some anti-semitism there because you know to him there's a difference between white people and ashkenazi jews i.e i'm an ashkenazi jew therefore to him i'm not a white person that is an anti-semitic trope that is something that a Nazi would say. That is something that a white supremacist would say. So he is spouting or parroting white supremacist type beliefs. Now, I don't know if he believes that. I don't fall under the category of white uh, because I happen to be an Ashkenazi Jew, but he is still saying those things and he's still repeating those things. So he's parroting or repeating white supremacist Nazi type of rhetoric in making his point now i don't necessarily believe that the the virus happens to be that way i think there's other reasonings behind it potentially right so let's say for example it doesn't affect chinese people well maybe it's because we don't believe the numbers out of china is he believing the numbers out of china i don't believe the numbers out of china I don't know if anybody who who has working brain cells believes the numbers coming out of China, right? So we have to take those numbers with a grain of salt. Let's let's do a history lesson though. Way back when in the Black Plague, right? Jews were blamed for the Black Plague. Why were the Jews blamed for the Black Plague? because Jews were seen as dying at a lesser rate than non-Jews. Why was this? Well, according to Jewish religious and cultural traditions, you have sort of, you know, traditions of cleanliness, you know, from, you know, eating kosher to other ritualistic forms of cleanliness that they follow in their day-to-day -day lives, where maybe other groups did not have such ritualistic cleanliness that they would follow in their day-to-day -day lives. And as such, because they were being more ritualistically clean, they were less likely to do the things that would get them more sick. More cleanliness meant less likely to be sick, so then less likely to die. 
So because of that, they were seen as, well, if they're not getting sick, they must be the ones who are the problems. So therefore, anti-Semitism, you know, loves to rear its ugly head, and therefore it must be the Jews doing it. So fast forward to today, maybe some of the same things apply. Or maybe some of the fact that maybe it's just the fact that a large percentage of Jewish people tend to be you know, more progressive, more liberal, and, and would tend to be more likely to mask up, to vaccinate once the vaccines became available, and you know, follow social distancing in order to make sure that you know they didn't get sick. Now there are some Republican Jews, sure, but there are you know larger groups of, of Jewish people who tend to be more left-leaning, and as such, we would be more likely to follow the science advice and less likely to be like the MAGA folks. As such, we're probably not going to be as likely to get sick and die of COVID as maybe the other people. So that's probably why RFK Jr. and other folks like him who he's citing in some of these papers that he's referencing are thinking that maybe Jews are more immune. It's not that Jews are more immune. It's that Jews are more likely to be liberal. Therefore, we're, we were more likely to socially distance. We were more likely, likely to vaccinate. We're more likely to mask up. So we're more likely to not catch it. We're more, and if we caught it, we're, we're, we're less likely to get sick. And if we get sick, we're less likely to go to the hospital. And if, even if we went to the hospital, we were less likely to die because we were vaccinated. Now, what about the black people? The black people are also more likely to be liberal. But before the vaccine rolled out, before the vaccine rolled out, black people in this country tend to be disproportionately poor because of decades and decades of marginalization, redlining, uh, Jim Crow laws, all of the things that have put black people at a societal disadvantage, you know, all the things that Republicans don't want you learning about, right? So now, and, and then black people, because they're poor, are more likely to live in communal housing. And if you're more likely to be living in, living in communal housing, you as such are more likely to be living in close quarters. And if you're doing that before the vaccines come out, you're then more likely to catch COVID. So again, no, it's not that black people, because they're black in and of themselves and their biology is, makes them more susceptible to COVID-19. That's not the case, RFK Jr. It's because black people, because of generations of marginalization and discrimination and disenfranchisement in this country, centuries even, that they've more they're more likely to live in poverty, more likely to live in communal housing. Therefore, before the vaccines came out, they were more likely to be catching COVID and more likely to that thus getting sick and die COVID before the vaccines came out. Now, once the vaccines came out, because black people 90% of the time are, you know, gonna be liberal, left, progressive type folks, they were then more likely to get the vaccine and as such the death rates amongst you know the blue communities dropped significantly so after the vaccines came out you know the death rates in like red counties were like five to one as compared to blue counties because the blue counties got vaccinated more so so he's probably looking at the numbers from overall and saying oh not looking, not not taking those other things into, into consideration, i.e., correlation, not causation, because they don't understand those things. Again, but he's an anti-vaxer. Take a look at the anti-vaxer type of thought when it comes to, let's say, autism. They want to say, oh, well, we're 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 giving more and more vaccines, and more and more people now have autism, so therefore the vaccines must be the cause, right? Well, no. Why? Because there's other things that we're doing. Like we are better at diagnosing autism. Like we can we can figure out that somebody 
has autism is, is has a diagnosis underneath the autism spectrum we're better at diagnosing now than we were maybe 20 years ago 30 years ago right and we're also perhaps including more things under the autism spectrum than perhaps we used to i believe asperger's is something that used to be considered separate but now that's something that falls under the umbrella of autism so if we're including more and labeling more things as autism and we're better at diagnosing autism then more people are going to be diagnosed with autism that doesn't mean that the more we vaccinate that we're getting more uh, people with autism or more autistic people because some people who have autism don't like to be some people like to be referred to as persons with autism some people like to be referred to as autistic people and if if you're talking to somebody with a diagnosis of autism you should talk to them about which way they'd like to be referred to and refer to them as such anyway back to the point of the argument uh those people who have autism diagnoses who have been diagnosed with autism have always existed we just either didn't label them because we weren't able to diagnose them with autism back then you know or we labeled them as having something else but nowadays we would diagnose them under the umbrella of autism so again it's not that more people have an autism diagnosis because of vaccines it's that we're now doing things differently and better and that's what these people don't understand but again they don't understand causation versus correlation they're and and they're and again they're they're using these you know ideas that have many times been used to promote anti-semitic thought which again let's let's go back to that because as somebody who was raised Jewish, it is very concerning to me when somebody with with that level of prominence will start a trying to separate out Jewish people from white people, as he did when he made it a point to say white people are more susceptible, and Ashkenazi folks are not, Ashkenazi Jews are not. Well, that's that's him saying. Ashkenazi Jews are not white people, so i.e. those are the others, they're not white. But B, you know, it, it also goes back to those good old days, according to them, uh, according to the Nazis and the white supremacists, where, you know, you could just shun the Jews. And we can't forget that that used to happen because we can't let it happen again. Because shunning Jews and blaming Jews for the problems of the world is a tale as old as time. And I'm not going to sit by and just let somebody like RFK Jr. just say it and let nothing happen because of it. I'm going to I'm going to raise whatever stink I can about it. And one more thing, just again, just to add into the point of the why are white people more susceptible? Well, maybe it's because there are a lot of white people who are conservatives, large, large white group people who are conservatives. And those people, you know, there are a lot of white people who didn't mask up, who didn't socially distance during the pandemic, who refused to get the vaccine. And as such, they were more likely to get COVID, to get sick of it, and to die of it. It's not because the, va the virus was made to target them. It's because they refused to follow the advice of the doctors. They refused to follow the advice of the epidemiologists and the virologists. Now, is it possible that there are structures in people's DNA that react differently? Or is it possible that certain people have different things? As far as I know, yeah, I mean, some viruses do act differently with certain people. I think, for example, uh, the mutation that might cause um, people who descend from Africa and who happen to have sickle cell anemia... I think that's a mutation that helps prevent them from getting malaria. I, I think that is a true statement. If someone wants to correct me on that, leave a comment in the, in, in the section below and, and let me know if I'm wrong. So, but under RFK's logic, 
it would be, he would then argue, oh, malaria was made to target white people because it harms black people less. No, there's a mutation genetically that took place that uh, created sickle cell anemia to make people who live in Africa, you know, more likely to survive malaria, but it, in the long term, because they were stolen and brought over here where malaria is not as big of a problem and now they have to deal with sickle cell anemia because they decided that, hey, enslavement is a good thing, according to, you know, the people in Florida, as we covered in my other video that I posted yesterday. Um, so, no, it, it's, it's no, but no, malaria wasn't targeted to go after white people under this sort of logic. It's just that there are certain biological conditions that take place over time that might make certain people less susceptible to a disease. It doesn't mean the disease was targeted against people. Again, if I have that slightly wrong, again, please feel free to comment below. Again, fe please feel free to comment about any of the things that I've talked about in this video below. And remember to like the, like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. And remember to join me every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Central, for Liberal Dane Radio. Talk from the left, that's right, here on YouTube. Thank you very much, and have a good day.